Hello, and welcome to CJ Creates. I'm CJ, and I create stuff. Everyone, I have to apologize. I made you wait more than 24 hours in between Pokemon videos. It's become clear to me that I don't have great time management skills. Sorry about that. I either take three months to post a new video, or I crank them out back to back, and they're not even days apart. I promise to get better at spacing them out so you get a reprieve between videos, but not so long that you forget I exist. If you missed my last video, it was a design I submitted to Subjectively's fan game. They're taking fan submissions right now, and I won't go into details here, but if you want to know more, check out my last video about my Velvet Worm Pokemon, Whirlvit. At the end of that video, I promised the next would be my regional variant of Tangela. Well, I'm happy to say that today I'm delivering. For starters though, let's talk about Tangela and its evolution Tangrowth. These are two plant-based Pokemon, one of which has been around since the beginning of the game, and it's always made me smile. I have this weakness for the weird Pokemon, the ones that conceptually are a little out there. Maybe it's because I've always seen myself as somewhat of an outcast, but I relate to them. Tangrowth in particular is one of my favorites. In making regional variants of them, I thought it would be fun to think about how regional Pokemon occur. If you didn't know, the first four Pokemon games are based on different regions of Japan. Kanto, Johto, Hoenn, and Sinnoh collectively represent the four different islands that make up Japan. The following games then spread out to different countries or locations all over the world. This is important though because Tangela comes from Kanto, which is actually named after the Kanto region of Japan where Tokyo is. is. And then Tangrowth, its evolution, comes from Hokkaido, the northmost island. The Maza region is the equivalent of Central America, which happens to be 6,712 miles away from Tangela's home. So, while it is unlikely that any Pokemon or real-life terrestrial animal would be able to make such a crossing, I think Tangela is a special exception. Originally, its body is covered in vines, but what's underneath is the actual Pokemon. Canonically, no one actually knows what's inside, and this gives me a lot of liberty in designing a regional variant for it. I thought it would be funny if at some point in time, a group of Tangela decided to depart from Kanto and walked into the ocean looking to explore. As they traveled, they walked, they swam, and over time they changed from grass types into grass water types. Upon reaching the shores of the Maza region, they waded through its lush kelp forests and became wrapped up in kelp. Upon going on land, they found that with their new water typing, they much preferred the sea and they decided to stay there. Now they live as inhabitants of the Mazian coastline, wading among the kelp's forests When you look at Mozzie and Tangela, you may ask, why on earth does it have a snorkel and goggles? Well, that question is easily answered through its nature. This Pokemon is reclusive, but also inquisitive at the same time. It loves to people watch the shores that it inhabits. The only problem with that is that its eyes are easily spotted by those who look in its direction, even with the foliage covering that it wears. Mozzie and Tangela will steal goggles and snorkels from beaches to try and better disguise themselves. It's almost as if they think that if someone looked their way, it would no longer be strange to see eyes poking out from the kelp. While this disguise is entirely ineffective, Tangela is convinced otherwise and will watch people all day long as long as it has goggles on its head. Meet Mozzie and Tangela, the kelp forest Pokemon. Its ancestors once crossed the ocean hoping to explore new lands. Now a water type, it finds the sea much more preferable. A fan of people watching, it tries to disguise itself using goggles and snorkels to remain unnoticed. Though ineffective, it will do anything to catch a glimpse of what's happening on land. If you find a pair of goggles floating in a kelp forest, be careful. You might just remove them from a Tangela and embarrass it by blowing its disguise. Mazian no locals know better than to disturb Tangela and ruin their fun. Now let's talk about Mazian Tangrowth. While it was tricky to evolve it for Mazian Tangela, I think one thing that regional forms hang their success on is originality. Everyone mocks Alolan Dugtrio for just being the same Pokemon but with fabulous hair, and I can't blame it for trying. But I do see a problem. A regional form needs to be different from the original and still the same somehow. A good mix of both is needed to please fans. The best example, in my mind at least, is Alolan Executor. It's a meme-worthy, but still sensible Pokemon in its design. It's the basic idea of Executor, but applied to a tropical environment, where it would be a palm tree. These kind of changes allow the design to be similar, but different enough to please fans. 
so in making Mazian Tangrowth, I decided to focus on two things. The first was to make sure that it evolved for Mazian Tangela. It needs to make sense in that context. It can't just be a regional form of Tangrowth that's unconnected to my Kelp Pokemon I just drew a moment ago. The second is that it does still need to be a Tangrowth. I know that seems obvious in concept, but it's one of those ideas that can really get away from you when you're designing. I have to force myself to look at pictures of both over and over again to make sure that the final result acts as a bridge between the two. To take Tangela to the next level, I thought it would make sense for its inquisitive nature to take hold. Eventually, it would tire of the beach. That could only be entertaining for so long. Once this happened, it would begin to explore the waters beneath the coastline, taking deeper and deeper steps underwater. Eventually, this would cause it to evolve into Mazian Tangrowth as it's strengthened by the high pressures of the deep sea. Mazian Tangrowth roams the ocean floor, searching for things that it's never seen before. That wasn't an intentional rhyme, please don't hurt me. Their disguise is now a scavenged diving suit they found somewhere in the deep sea. They also keep their kelpie covering and attempt to blend in. Their inquisitive nature leads them to follow anything and everything around, watching from a distance. They're known to sit incredibly still when they do find something they've never seen before, just staring, taking it in. I imagine that these habits make them incredibly hard to track down, as they're usually the ones tracking you. Their nature is innocent though, they're afraid of you more than you are of them, and they're not trying to do any harm, and they seem to enjoy their solitary wanderings, trying to see everything that they can and go everywhere else too. The only problem I had in making this Pokemon was the typing. Subjectively, in announcing that they were taking fan submissions, asks artists to keep a couple of things in mind. They specifically said that they have enough grass types, water types, and fighting types, and made it clear that Pokemon of these types would not be heavily considered for the fan game. Because of this, my Mazian Tangela and Tangrowth are more fan art than anything. The real submissions are Whirlvit and Whirloom, with these two being more for fun. Initially, I debated with myself if it was worth talking about the properties of kelp when drawing these Pokemon, and I've decided it is. It can't be that boring, right? Mostly, I just wanted to highlight the little bubbles you see wrapped up in the kelp on their bodies. These little guys are what allow kelp to grow vertically underwater. While most aquatic plants can rely on the rigidity of their cell walls to help them grow to great heights, kelp grows so tall and so thin so fast that it would fold in half and fall over long before it grew high enough to reach the sun that it wants. These little bubbles are grown and filled with gases as the plant grows upwards to help the plant float towards the surface. Mozzie and Tangrowth would use these bubbles at will, filling them with more or less gas to float up or sink deeper into the sea. Its shape isn't conducive to swimming, so rather it walks along the ocean floor. Not to say that it can't swim, but it's just not very fast when doing so. I like to think that it rather enjoys its strolls along the seafloor, exploring and taking in the sights. Meet Mozzie and Tangrowth, the deep kelp Pokemon. Mozzie and Tangrowth still tries to disguise itself for people watching, having found an old diving suit to hide its face. Though it encounters fewer humans in deep waters where it resides, it still doesn't want to take the risk. It strolls around on the ocean floor, exploring the waters off the coast of the Maza region. Upon discovering something previously unseen, it's been known to stare at it for hours, taking in its new find. Well guys, that's all I've got for today. What do you think? I, uh, what's happening? Why'd it go dark all of a sudden? What is that? I'm, I'm joking, of course. I didn't get attacked by anything. Don't, don't worry. This Pokemon usually doesn't attack anything at all, actually. Though it would be what 
people could expect if they were to enter into the deep trenches a ways off the Mazian coast. We can get into this strange behavior in a minute, but let's talk about why a third evolution of Mazian tangula and tangrowth makes sense. We don't always get a new evolution when making a regional form, but it's becoming more and more common. In Gen 7, when regional forms were introduced, zero new evolutions were created in connection with regional forms. In Gen 8 and Legends Arceus though, this became a new trend. Things like Sneasler and Obstagoon were new and interesting concepts that I quickly became a big fan of. In making my Mozzie and Tangla and Tangrowth, I thought it would be fun to apply this idea to them. Mazian tangrowth going deeper and deeper into the ocean would lead it to eventually find the Mazian equivalent of the Middle America Trench, which is off the coast of Mexico and stretches down to Costa Rica. This trench is 1,700 miles long and is at its deepest 21,880 feet. Though it's not the deepest trench in the world, it is one of the largest and most notable. This deep trench would of course have an equivalent in the world of Pokemon, and that's where this evolution is going to reside. As Mazian Tangrowth evolves, it no longer has a fitting disguise to cover itself with. Having outgrown its diving suit, it finds the only thing that it can fit inside, a wrecked submarine found in a trench, and it does its best to squeeze its way into it. Like I said, these disguises aren't actually effective, but rather a manifestation of the nature of these Pokemon. Though this evolution has grown quite large, it still prefers to remain unseen while exploring and observing the trenches it can be found in. There is an interesting development in the nature of this Pokemon. By now, it has seen just how harsh the sea can be, especially to humans. In all of its wandering, it has seen wreck after wreck after wreck. And because of this, if it sees humans entering an area that it deems dangerous, it can't help but rush out in an attempt to save them. Safe is a relative term though, it may think it's saving them, but there isn't always a danger there, just a presumed one. Still fearful of being seen, it is known to release an inky substance from the bulbs on its kelp, and this blinds the witnesses of its heroism. By now, you should have a good idea of why I introduced this third evolution in the way that I did. It was saving me from the danger of ending my video without creating it. It's a little cheesy, I am aware, but I thought it would be fun to try and mix things up. Also, this is going to change the typing of this Pokemon. Maybe. I'm... I'm not sure, okay? I could really use your guys' help. I think it would make sense for this Pokemon to become a dark type, not because it's evil, but because it lives in deep water and dark trenches. It also releases this dark ink and it helps it hide. That would lend to the typing as well. The difficulty in doing this is deciding which typing to get rid of. I struggle to remove the grass typing because its whole body is still covered in kelp, but also, how do you remove the water type when it lives and thrives at the bottom of the ocean? I'm not sure what to do. What do you think? For now, I think the solution I'm going to go with is a water dark type. Does it need a type change though? If so, what combination do you think is best? I'm really not sure how everyone's going to feel about a dark type Pokemon, but I personally don't see them as evil or bad. So what classifies them as dark? It can't just be the color black, at least for me. It may or may not be shocking to you, but this design took me the longest of any Pokemon that I've ever drawn. I'm not sure what it was either. Maybe it was the detailing or how picky I was in getting it just right. Either way, the drawing you're seeing me do now took about an hour and a half, but the official art took me somewhere closer to five hours to draw. And I'm not exaggerating, it felt like it took forever. Looking back, I think the detailing in the kelp plants on its arms and body 
were just so intricate that I had to really slow down and give them the time they deserved. This design may feel a little busy with its use of so many kelp plants, but I think it makes sense. This Pokemon's physical appearance is a reflection of its nature, and there have been plenty of complex Pokemon designs being created as of late. I think Kalisopod is a great example. It has so many plates to it, and it maintains readability by reducing the patterns on its carapace. I've tried to do the same thing here by making sure that the colors are at a minimum and that each portion is always the same color. What do you think though? Is it always easy to see this Pokemon as a Pokemon? Or does the amount of kelp plants make it distracting and hard to read? At the end of this, I did make a very drastic decision with this design. Originally, I had planned to make it based on red kelp to help it match its deep sea theme. I won't get into the details of why, but in deep water scenarios, red or clear colorations of the body make something the hardest to see. It's why so many deep sea animals are either red or completely see-through. In making the shiny teal colored Pokemon though, I just fell in love. I realized that the original colors were too close together and made the Pokemon difficult to separate into parts. So I switched the two, making the teal coloration its base form and an updated red variant into the shiny. Meet Tangoliath, the giant kelp Pokemon. This Pokemon resides in and enjoys exploring deep trenches off the coast of the Maza region. It enjoys watching Pokemon and humans alike and will sit or follow them from a distance while it does so. It's very shy and tries to disguise itself as a submarine in case someone notices it. This Pokemon was once thought to fiercely guard these trenches, covering anyone who tried to enter them in ink and swimming them up to the surface. Now they're better understood to be attempting a rescue from the dangers they presume to lurk in the trench. Though these concerns can sometimes be unfounded, Tangoliath, though big, has no ill intentions towards anyone. Now I'm actually done. Don't worry, no more surprises for this video. Ah, I got you. Nah, I probably, I probably didn't. It, that's okay. I would like to know though what you thought of its introduction though. Was that fun? Was that a, a cool way to introduce a Pokemon or should I just stick to the normal and, and don't try out too many new things? Lastly, I want to know what you think of my Mozzie and Tangela, Tangrowth, and their new evolution, Tangoliath. I want real opinions too. Do you think they're successful regional variants, and how does Tangoliath line up as a Pokemon? I personally love it. It seems so curious, but still timid. It's almost as if it could work up the nerve to rush in and save me, but just barely. This whole line of Pokemon is somewhat naive in nature, and we don't see that a ton in the world of Pokemon. I'm a big fan of it. For now, I hope you like what I've made, and I can't wait to see you create something of your own.